Hi, this is Stephen from Mona Disso. Yesterday, AMD told us all about their new RDNA 3 7000 series desktop GPUs. And one of the biggest takeaways is the price. For $899, you get the RX 7900 XT, which will go against the 1199 NVIDIA RTX 4080. And for $999, the RX 7900 XTX, which will go up against the $1600 RTX 4090. Now that's a huge price reduction and with a 1.5x to 1.7x improvement over the 6950XT will basically match the 4090 in standard rasterization. Based on Tom's Hardware's testing of the 4090 and the 6950XT at 4K across 8 games, even at 1.5x the 6950XT performance, the 7900XTX would be only 9% slower than the 4090 and at 1.7x, it would be 3% faster. Now, Tech Power Up also posted some slides showcasing uh, AMD's actual numbers in 4K and added them to charts that TechSpot had tested with the 4090. Again, the 7900 XTX is holding up very well, especially at that price point. It, it makes the RTX 4080 completely irrelevant, unless possibly for ray tracing. It's only in ray tracing that it still struggles despite them having 50% more performance per compute unit. And from this slide, it looks like in Cyberpunk 2077 with Ray Tracing Ultra, the 7900 XTX gets only 15 to 20 FPS without FSR and 62 FPS with FSR2. So it looks like it definitely needs FSR to help it in Ray Tracing. Hardware Unboxed did a comparison with Ray Tracing on and off between the 6950 XT and the RTX 4090. They got 49 FPS with no ray tracing at 4K. Increasing that by 1.7x gives 83 FPS, same as the 4090. Now their answer to DLSS3 with its AI inserted frame is FSR3, which uses some mystical fluid motion frame technology to double the frame rate. And it's this that really allows it to achieve high frame rates on high resolution panels. AMD touted their DisplayPort 2.1 versus NVIDIA's 1.4A on the uh, RTX 4000 series. I am surprised NVIDIA didn't future-proof it because it is clear that these gen next-gen GPUs are geared up for 4K or even higher uh, resolution panels. They say DisplayPort 2.1 can do 4K at 480Hz, but everywhere I have looked says 4K at 240Hz and DisplayPort 1.4 is 4K at 120Hz. Can someone perhaps explain this to me in the comments below? Perhaps I'm missing something. But either way, there is no doubt. High refresh rate, 4K and even 8K panels are on the horizon. So this is big reason to go with RDNA 3. Now RDNA 3 cards are only slightly larger than the current gen and much smaller than the RTX 4090. Getting a case to fit the 4090 and its crazy 16-pin adapter is actually quite difficult. Even large cases like the Lian Li 011 Dynamic will struggle to close the side panel. So this is a big selling point, you know, when upgrading your existing system. There's no need to buy a new case with RDNA 3. Now my channel is mainly about gaming laptops. So when Frank has all jumped on the stage and showed a slide you know, showing AMD Advantage laptops, I opened a beer with excitement. Now, was this going to be the first time that a GPU manufacturer was going to announce next-gen mobile in the same breath as a desktop? Nope. As usual, us laptop users get the short end of the stick. But all is not lost. As you know, NVIDIA's RTX 4090 desktop cards uses 450 watts. And when pegged at 175 watts, it has a Time Spy GPU score of 22,000, as shown by Tallyho Tech, and I'll put you know a link to his video in my description. Now that's 57% more than a laptop 3080 Ti. See, Nvidia's Ada Lovelace's performance drops off a cliff at 50% power, or 225 watts, as shown by Tom's hardware. Nvidia's Mobile 4000 lineup will start with a 175 watt RTX 4090 but it will be based on the ADA 103, same as the desktop 4080. Again, shame on Nvidia, creating confusion. People would logically think, you know, it's based on the desktop 4090. I suspect the core count has to remain high to compensate for the lower power. 
and I wouldn't be surprised to see the same number of cores as the desktop 4080. So what we need to do is estimate where a mobile uh, 175 watt RTX 4090 will score. Now bear with me here as I make some big assumptions to work this out. So sit down and grab a beer. Now the desktop 10 gigabyte RTX 3080 has 17% less cores than the 3090, but only led to a 10% reduction in times by GPU score. So it is not linear. It's about 60% the percentage difference in cores. Now the desktop 4080 has a four, has 40% less cores than the desktop 4090. So 60% of 40 is 24%. So this would mean the 22,000 points that we got on the 175 watt desktop 4090 would be about 24% less for the 175 watt 4090 mobile using the same you know, using the same uh, number of cores as the 4080, or 16,700 points. The 175 watt laptop 3080 Ti scores around about 14,000 points, which would mean the 175 watt uh, 4090 laptop will be about 20% faster. And this is assuming the mobile 4090 has the same number of CUDA cores as the desktop 4080 chip, which I think it must. Now lowering it will reduce the lead over the 3080 Ti. I think 20% should be the minimum generational boost that we should see. And I do hope that we do see more than this. However, AMD says that RDNA 3 provides a 54% performance gain per watt over the current gen. And this is because the front end is 15% faster, yet uses 25% less power. Now this bodes very well for laptops where power is very limited. The most amount of GPU of power I've seen is 200 watts, and that was with the Mobile 2080 Super. Now, NVIDIA limits it now to max 175 watts, and AMD is at 145 watt max. So if we see the same 54% performance per watt on the Mobile 7000, the 11,300 times by graphics score that we get on the 6950 XT will become 17,400. So quite similar to what I estimated on the mobile 4090 to score. You know, both around about the 17,000 points. Now this lower power combined with the increased power efficiency of Zen 4 bodes well for gaming on battery for the next generation of advantage laptops. I am though concerned how DLSS3 and FSR3 will perform on laptops. Certainly with DLSS3 you have to contend with visual artifacts and high latency. Laptops will have a lower frame rate than a desktop, so these artifacts will be more noticeable. And it is recommended having at least 120 FPS to overcome the latency, which may be quite difficult on a QHD or 4K laptop, especially if you're using ray tracing. Now, FSR3 will work on NVIDIA cards, even the GTX series. So imagine a GTX 1080 laptop, you know, which is what, six, seven years old now, getting twice the performance than it did with FSR2. Now that would breathe new life into your old system. I'm also a bit concerned why neither AMD or Nvidia are even mentioning the lower end cards. Perhaps there still is a chip shortage and they don't want to waste them on lower SKUs. But still, there is no denying that AMD has put pressure on Nvidia to lower their prices. And that is a good thing. And we get a native fair improvement of 20% for laptops with additional improvements, you know, using the, the latest super sampling, it may be time you know, to save your money and buy a new laptop. Now let me know your thoughts. I'd like to thank you for watching. Bye now.